It's the Andy Thompson Show on ESPN 97.7. Hey, podcast listeners. Tired of ads barging into your favorite news podcasts? Good news. With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Stay up to date on everything newsworthy by downloading the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash ad-free news. That's amazon.com slash ad-free news to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Larry, bring it on, buddy. Peter Peters on the Andy Thompson Show. Brought to you by balanceofnature.com and check out balanceofnature.com. That's real fruit, real veggies in a capsule. Don't be one of the nine of ten Americans that don't get their proper serving of fruits and veggies. Balanceofnature.com. What do we got, Sambo? Sport hole. Yeah. Uh, what's your skeeter beater on a Monday night football Monday? <laughs> Um, all right, we're going with the Jaguars. We're going with the Bills. Bills favored by four and a half at home. Throw the ball to Kincaid, Josh Allen, right, Larry? Yes. He's got to get five catches tonight, don't you think? Yes. 60 yards? Yes. Um, we're taking the, the Bills. Here's what I want to say about the Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence said, quote, it's not fun being angry and wanting to get back out there. I think that's one of the worst parts about losing, especially when you don't play well. And that's true. The weekend ruins your, nothing ruins your weekend like losing, Lawrence, as you know from your constant trips out to the Virgin River. Yes. You can put, you can put a wrench in your mood and your weekend plans when you lose. And, uh, yes. Luckily for Utah college football fans, this past weekend, is, I guess except for Utah State, what a horrible, horrible loss that was on the road to Temple, Lawrence. That's not even on our agenda to talk about today, so I'm talking about it now, right? Yes. They lost to Temple. Temple is one of the worst teams in the country. They were 0-3. They lost to Navy by like 40 points. And Utah goes out with out there, thumbs their nose at the pig farmer, goes with Petrus and... Uh, Devastating loss for Utah State. All right, so take, uh, did we even tell the good folks at home, take the Bills? Who cares? Minus four and a half. Let's go to Katie Rosen. Rosen for our first hour look at the National News Desk. Go ahead, Katie. Thanks, guys. This show stinks. From the Sport Old National News Center on Bluff Street, I'm Katie Rosen. Rosen. Reggie Bush to sue USC, the Pac-12, and NCAA for NIL compensation. Quote, Big Noon fired me to pay Urban more, he said. My parents needed a new house. North Carolina's uh, coach Mac Brown is overwhelmingly supported by players who thought he was stepping down. That was before they gave up 70 points to James Madison, which superseded writing the Constitution of the United States of America as the greatest thing James Madison has ever done. <laughs> The Mountain West is making a push to keep its remaining schools together, although they're remaining the conference to the, quote, we might need to think about UTEP conference. Today's Sport Old <laughs> National News is brought to you by Lawrence's mom. From the Sport Old National News Center on Bluff Street, I'm Katie Rosen. Rosen. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, I, I, you know, I don't think. Sport Hall. Sports, 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 sports. I don't think they're going to be thinking about UTEP just yet. Two-minute drill. 1-0 delivery. Hammered down the line in right field, and it is fair and slides into third for an RBI triple. Presented by Ideal Home and Auto Paint. Touchdown! 27 yards. They make it look so easy. Sport Hole. How about that Friday night under the lights? Another exciting weekend of Region 9 football. Yeah, it was, buddy. What a season it's been. Region 9, a lot of close games week in and week out. Pineview beat Dixie 35-34 in overtime. Uh, that's the game I was at. You heard the call on ESPN 97-7. It was Carrick Segmiller and Rustin Burnside. Right? Were you listening, Larry? No. Oh. So it was a great game. Let's start with the Dixie Pineview game because it was 
it was crazy because Pineview has Brock Harris, who's the super duper star player, tight end, and he didn't catch a pass all game. And I'll play you the audio of talking to Coach Boyer, but the message after the game was sacrifice. We had some of our star players having to sacrifice in our game plan this week to to get Dixie, they said. And so Levi Shaw only had six completions in that game. So credit Dixie's defense, first of all. But on the other side, credit Pineview's ability to run the dang ball. That uh, McWilliam or Gwilliam kid, sophomore, comes in for Kyle Richardson who gets hurt early in the game, and he rushes for 144 yards. Fia Fia down in the red zone was tremendous running the ball for Pineview, and they get the win because of kind of surprising in surprising uh, areas, surprising kids who you don't talk about in the pregame who come out and play so well. Uh, Carson Curtis was tremendous defensively. There was a key stop they had late in the fourth quarter, and Curtis stopped the run against Dixie on third and short and fourth and short. He made two huge plays to get the ball back for Pineview. And then I went down and talked with Coach Boyer, and you got that sound, Larry? With Boyer and, and Brock Harris. Yes. Okay, let's 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 go to that. Coach KJ Boyer, what a win. Uh, tell me how you guys pull it off. Hey, the sacrifice, man. People did things. They just did whatever they could to win the game, and that was the most important thing to them. The team was more important than individual goals tonight. We had a lot of young kids stepping up into the game, running back-wise. Russell Jacobs coming in. We had kids just step up, and that was amazing to see. Um, that last drive in regulation where you guys got that defensive stop, Curtis made a bunch of good plays. Yeah. Huge, huge play by the defense. Carter, Curtis is a, Curtis, Curtis is a stud. I, there's nothing more I can ask from that kid to do. He does everything I ever ask him. He lets me yell at him, and he just says, all right, let's get it going, and we keep going forward. So I'm I'm just proud of everybody on this team. Man. I saw you guys giving a big hug to uh, Brock after the game. Tell me yeah. about his contribution tonight in a, a one-point he'll, game. He'll, he'll, leave this, he'll leave this school. He's going to have the most field goals blocked and the most PATs blocked. We got two wins because of what he sacrifices to do with Tuwilla. <laughs> right, one point victory for Pineview. Big part of that was because of a block PAT by Brock Harris. Brock, tell us about that play. Man. Um, so the, the plan was to, to run the ball a lot. Um, and I'm and I'm not mad at all. I didn't get a single catch, but I'm just proud we got the we got the got the W. And um, when I when I blocked that first PAT against Tuwilla. It's just uh, now I'm in on every PAT field goal block. So, yeah, I just gave it my all. I knew if I blocked it and we scored, we'd win that game. So, congrats, man. Thank you. Great game. So, it was Harris who brought who blocked the PAT. And going back to that Tawilla game, he blocked one. And it was a one-point game. So, incredible. And that's impressed. I've been impressed with Brock Harris the whole offseason and into the season where he's a complete team guy media day completely about the team not about himself he's not leaving Pineview to go to a prep school he's about Pineview and about this team and about helping them to win games and if that means the game plan is we're not going to throw it very much to you but you got to block and you got to you got to block for the run game but then you got to block the PAT so he can win he does it so that was pretty cool Dixie battled their butts off um, Rand Sawyer had another great game. Defensively, I thought they played pretty well. And it just came down to one one play where, the, you know, they have a guy who's 6'6", who can jump and block your PAT. So, very exciting game over at Flyer Field, Larry. Let's go to uh, the Tough Luck Tigers, man. You go to Hurricane Schedule. Moapa, a game that... They feel like was theirs. Dixie, a game like they thought was theirs. And then Cedar, same thing. They got a lead late, under a minute left. And Everett Kelling throws a, what was it? A 68-yard touchdown pass to Trace Overson for the game winner for the Reds. Hurricane loses 28-21. They had the 21-20 lead with less than a minute left. Cedar went for two to make it 28 so another, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't think they could go up to Cedar because Cedar's playing so much better this year. I didn't know that Hurricane could go up and play them that well and probably 
should have won that game if they could have gotten a stop. I mean, it's hard to say they should have won because Cedar's offense is so explosive that you can't assume you're going to stop them on that last drive. But tough, tough, another tough loss for Hurricane in a season with a bunch of tough losses. Let's go to Crimson Cliffs. They beat Snow Canyon 35-6. McCord Christiansen had 185 yards and a touchdown for the Mustangs. They get better every week. I thought this game was going to be much closer and we'll talk more about it uh, as the week continues. But they're running the ball a ton. Uh, Ryder Sherritt had a great game through for over 240 yards as well offensively. And obviously the defense holding Snow Canyon, who is pretty, can be pretty dang explosive themselves, holding them to six points. Remarkable game in reach and against a tough opponent by Crimson Cliffs. Thank you, Larry. Anything I missed there, buddy? No. All right, let's go. We got, uh, let's see, we got Big Tad. Every Monday, we get our guy Big Tad to break down the NFL scores from over the weekend. Take it away, Big Tad. National Field Goal League Blitz with Big Tad. All right, let's get to it. Jets 24, Pats 3. Rodgers is back. Eat that Moderna, you soul-sucking scum. These Patriots definitely would have lost to the British, and we'd all have jacked up teeth and stupid accents right now. I wouldn't trust Jacoby Brissett to quarterback a powder puff game. Jared Mayo, we want some of our money back. Hey, Robert Kraft, you suck, you fat idiot. This is one season that's not going to have a happy ending, pervert. New York football Giants 21, Paul Browns 15. Malik neighbors can dance a little bit. Wow, Daniel Jones, good job, nerd. You finally did something positive. We should take you to Chuck E. Cheese. Hey, Deshaun, learn how to hand off the ball. What's wrong with you? Whoever the Browns coach is is an idiot. Who is this, Stefanski? Go back to Poland. Coach a soccer team, you putts. Amari Cooper, thanks for showing up. Brian Dayball, enjoy this win, Baldy. Next week, you'll be back to being an idiot. Cheeseheads, 30. Titans, 14. Will Levis, you're making this awkward. Just leave and go join the cast of MTV's Real World already. That mayonnaise company called. They want some of their money back, you airhead. You took eight sacks. That's worse than Scheider Sanders. Malik Willis, way to run the ball. Good job. Josh Jacobs, run north and south, you idiot. You're not playing for the Raiders anymore. Get a map. DeAndre Hopkins, get a haircut. You're not good anymore. Stop acting like you're important, Chris Brooks. BYU stand up. Three carries for three yards. Colts 21, Bears 16. Caleb, you're going to need to up your bandwidth for your Netflix shows this season. You're probably binging Ginny and Georgia right now while in the fetal position. You're so uncoachable. Eberfluss hates, and so do all of your teammates. Get rid of the ball, numb nuts. Remember when you wanted to own a portion of the team? How about owning a portion of the playbook, you deer in headlights? Man, you stink. You lost to the Colts, who are horrible. Anthony Richardson, colorblind. DeAndre Swift, we want some of our money back. DeAndre Swift, more like DeAndre slow and stupid. Eberfluss, you're fired, you idiot. You think just because you grow a beard, we don't realize it's still you? Pack up your things. Go work in an office, Max, you dope. Uh, Vikings 34, Texans 7. Sam Darnold, way to go. You finally got to play for a competent franchise, and you're making everybody proud, Ginge. C.J. Stroud, I thought you were the god of football. What happened? It's like you were playing Michigan. You suck. Cam Akers, try running faster. Nico Collins, you're on offense. Kirk Cousins, eat your heart out, you ball baby. You were the problem. No wonder O'Connell couldn't wait to get rid of you. Eagles 15, Saints 12. Crossing routes always work. One, the dummy defensive backs always gets tangled up, and then you've got your goofball tight end running down the sideline to win the game. What took you so long, Sirianni? Man, you're dense. Saquon Barkley, way to not get hurt and actually do something. Jalen Hurts, why don't you throw the ball to Covey every once in a while? Derek Carr, why don't you cry about it? You stunk. Alvin Kamara, 2017, called They Want You Back. Rashid Shaheed, five targets, zero catches. People in Ogden want to talk to you. Steelers, 20, Chargers, 10. Jim Harbaugh, welcome to the NFL. 
your quarterback's a wuss. Taylor Haneke, you may as well put in a corpse. That guy sucks pretty bad. The Steelers are winning with Justin Fields. Hey, McCaskey family, how do you like them apples? Get that old bag out of the front office. Danger. Russ may never see the field again. Jalen Warren, East High stand-up, three carries, five yards. Broncos, 26, Tampa Bay, seven. Hey, Baker, how many natty lights did you have before the game? You suck. Hey, Mike Evans, you're supposed to try hard every play, you prima donna. Bo Nix, good win, pretty boy. Sean Payton, quarterback whisperer. Just kidding. I'd rather have the fat guy from the Adam Sandler movies coach my team. No, not Chris Farley, the dude from King of Queens where he's married to that spicy Scientologist, Kevin James. That's right. Panthers 36, Raiders 22. If Al Davis wasn't dead, you'd all be fired. His kid with the pumpkin pie haircut has gone soft. The season's over. You lost to the Red Rifle in spectacular fashion. The last time a carrot top had a day this good, I can't even remember. Did Scalabrini hit a buzzer beater once or something? Who knows? Hey, Gardner, why don't you go play David Spade's best friend in Joe Dirt 3, you pathetic idiot? You couldn't win a game in the Pac-2. Hey, Davante Adams, the point is to get open. Antonio Pierce, you're fired. She hawks 24, Snowflake 3. Tyreek Hill wishes he would have been taken to prison. This team stinks. Hey, Devon A. Chan, your yards per carry is lower than Lawrence's GPA. You suck. New Browns, 28. Cowgirls, 25. Dak, we want some of our money back. What's wrong with you? Zeke Elliott, fat. Three carries, six yards. Good job. Why don't you open your own food truck? That way you won't have to leave the house. C.D. Lamb. Remember when you were good for like three games last year. Derek Henry, thanks for showing up. You're like fries from McDonald's. Every third time you might get something that's not trash. Rams, 27, 40, Niners, 24. Who's the idiot who dropped the pass? Good job, moron. You lost the game. What? You don't like it in the hands. Poor Purdy. Little squirt can't catch a break. Stafford, good game. Go have another kid. 2-2 two -two Atwell's pretty quick out there. They don't need that little baby Cooper Cup or the other little baby Cooper Cup Jr., a.k.a. Puka. Nurse your little injuries. You know football's not for everybody. Lions 20, Cardinals 13. Marvin Harrison Jr., we thought you were going to play like your dad. It turns out you play like O.J.'s dad. He was a ballerina. Kyler Murray, why don't you subscribe to him? Get some hype pills, you suck. James Conner, the end zone is that way, and why are you so slow? They need to move this team to Salt Lake. Swifties and the refs, 22, Falcons, 17. Chiefs defense, stand up. Mahomes, what's the matter you can't complete a two-yard crosser with the game on the line? Are you tired from losing to Illinois on Friday? Travis Kelsey, you move like a barge. What's wrong with you? Stop fornicating and start getting in the gym again. Kirk Cousins, you're not very good. Having you in the red zone is like having Andy in line at Arby's. A turnover is coming. You should retire and go be on Big Noon Kickoff. Talk to you next week, everybody. Sport Hall. Sports, 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 sports. Thank you, Big Tap. Now the punt. And that one might have been touched, maybe. Scooped up by the return man, Parker Kingston. And now he's going to turn the corner. There he goes. Kingston to the 50. Still going. Kingston. Touchdown. Sport hole. Is BYU now a playoff threat? Oh, yeah. Holy cow, Larry. That was the... Uh, that was one of the most amazing games in the history of BYU football. In the history of my viewing football. Unbelievable. Um, There's two ways to look at this game. Like, BYU is going to Waco next week and their dogs. They're like two and a half point underdogs going to play Baylor who's terrible. So some people are looking at it like, oh, this is BYU showing that they're capable of winning eight games this year or more or winning the conference. They're 4-0 and now. And then others are saying 
This is a oblong ball that bounces weird every once in a while, and a lot of weird things happen in that game. BYU scored three touchdowns in seven game seconds and special teams touchdowns and all that stuff. So there's two ways to go with it. I am more on the side that BYU is legit, Larry. I mean, if you look at the trends, look at this defense, what they did against SMU, what they did against um, Kansas State at home, they're getting after people. They're wrecking people. I mean, this Avery Johnson kid, if we had the pregame sound, Larry, which I don't think we do, but it is uh, Fleming and... uh, who is it? Osweiler? Who is the color guy? Talking about Avery Johnson and how coaches are saying he's like Lamar Jackson. How good he is. He's the next big thing in the Big 12. Holy cow. He's a top three dual threat kid out of high school. Stayed home. Kansas State. And BYU made him look like Florence Nightingale. So there's something legit about this defense. Kansas State went and worked over Arizona, another team that is supposed to be a contender to win the Big 12, got worked over by Kansas State, who just got completely demolished by BYU and the ROC, and the fans were great, and the atmosphere was great. And I just cannot imagine a more satisfying all three phases victory for the Cougars. It's unbelievable. Here's Jay Drew's uh, jaw-dropping occurrences. This is from the Deseret News. A scoop and score from a seldom-played freshman safety, Tommy Prassus. An interception by a defensive lineman, Tyler Batty, and another by a linebacker, Harrison Taggart, both career first. A twisting, turning, tackle-breaking, 21-yard touchdown run by freshman Sione Moa who shares the same first and last name with a linebacker. An absolutely mind-boggling sequence when the Cougars scored three touchdowns in the space of three minutes, seven seconds of game time. A fourth down uh, trip up of nimble-footed Kansas State quarterback Avery Johnson that not only turned the ball over on downs, but quite possibly prevented the dynamic sophomore from taking it to the house. And last but not least, that incredible 90-yard punt return for a touchdown by Parker Kingston that Satake described as a mistake and then a mistake made right. It's incredible. I mean, BYU manhandled the most physical team in the Big 12 year in and year out. Kansas State comes in as the most physical team every year. And BYU took so much crap over the last couple of years on how they're not physical in the trenches, how defensively they get no push, they get no penetration, they get no quarterback pressures, they get no sacks. They ate Kansas State up for breakfast. Lavelle... Decibel Edwards Stadium. Great job, ROC. Retzloff, 15 of 21, 149 yards, and two touchdowns. Here, here's um, here's the kind of walking it back, walking back some of the excitement that I don't want to do because BYU fans should just be exultant for the rest of the season. I mean, you've, you're 4-0, you know, you know you're going to get to six wins because the Big 12 sucks. You're going to get to six. You're, you're going to go bowling. You can count on that. So just relax. Enjoy this season. It's gravy. You might get to eight wins. You might get more, you know. But the one kind of turd in the punch bowl thing, Larry, which I hate to do, is if you if you take away some of the bizarre things that happened, and look at some of the things that are kind of the things you need to do well at, usually to win games. Three of nine on third downs, not great. And 92 yards of rushing on 3.4 yards per carry. I know that their running back room is banged up and they're playing third, fourth, and fifth guys and stuff like that. But if though if there is one turd in the, in the delicious punch bowl, that is BYU killing Kansas State. It's that. So that's a little bit concerning. I mean, they ran for 92. They threw for a buck 50. So it wasn't like an incredible offensive game, but it doesn't matter. Everything else was amazing. What a night to be at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Congratulations, Coach Satake and BYU. We will be hearing from Coach Satake the, on the polygraph press conference tomorrow, right, Larry? Yes. 
after that huge win. Thank you. The sport hole. Sports, 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 sports. Dealing with the hay at 86 years old, they are tough as can be. Makai Bernard on the run. Keeps his feet and breaks away. Look out. Bernard hesitations on the sideline. Makai Bernard embracing the ball down to the 25 to hang on. A 61-yard run. Sport hole. Is Utah good enough with Isaac Wilson to win the conference? Anybody is good enough to win this conference. Uh, Texas Tech beat Arizona State. SMU was not in the conference, but they just beat the heck out of TCU. And we know that SMU's just kind of okay. Colorado beat Baylor. West Virginia beat Kansas. You know, here's what I want to say about Utah, Larry, is... For the whole off season, Utah and Utah fans have been annoying the crap out of Big 12 fans. Assuming that they're going to come in and just wipe the floor with the conference. They don't want to be in the Big 12. They want to be in the Big 10. The Big 12 hates Utah. And everybody in the Big 12, including and especially BYU, is rooting against but everybody, it's, it's almost as if Utah has converted every Big 12 team into BYU in that every Big 12 team hates Utah with a passion. And for Utah to go into the most prestigious school left in the Big 12, Oklahoma State, in Stillwater and completely demoralize that team. It was one of the greatest Big 12 in-conference defensive games for 90 until six minutes left in the fourth quarter where Alan Bowman was just he was thrown out of the game he was so horrible Utah was devout they were devouring him they bring in the other guy he was even worse so they have to go back to Bowman <laughs> and Bowman you know gets a cut with Scally or I don't know what they did Utah allows a couple of prevent defense touchdowns to make it semi-respectable well, three-point game. It was 22-3 to three for most of that game. B- B- or, uh, Utah's defense was unbelievable. And it's kind of like in the movie Office Space where the guy's about to go to prison and the advice is to kick someone's butt or become someone's B on the first day and Utah rolled into the yard the first day in the Pac-12 and found the biggest, baddest dude in the conference and made them their B in game one. After all the talk about, hey, you can't just come into this conference like you think you can. This isn't the Pac-12. All of these teams are good. It's competitive. No, Whittingham took a dump at the 50-yard line in Stillwater. And it was incredible. And to have both of these teams in, in the same week, BYU and Utah, play the best teams in the Big 12 and just slap them silly, Larry. Unbelievable. Very satisfying. And it's coming into this year, it's going to be the most exciting, who the heck knows what's going to happen season for Utah. And now it's kind of becoming that for BYU. Can't imagine a more fun start to this year for both of these teams. And the the shower thought, Larry, was BYU is the same scheme, same coaches, same players as last year. The only thing I can think of for how they're playing so much better defensively is they got that high school reunion coming up on November 9th, and they want to stick it to Utah. They haven't played these guys in five years. They don't want to show up flabby. They don't want to show up soft. They've been in the gym. They've been doing whatever. They've been taking runs in the morning to get ready for that reunion. And BYU looks ready to play anybody in this conference. So what a night of college football. Um, Utah State losing sucked. We'll talk about uh, SUU and uh, Utah Tech later on in the sport hole, right, there. Yes. Ollie Gordon, right? Dope, Mr. Doke Walker and all that stuff completely inhaled by Utah. So I thought, oh, this this game couldn't have been better for Utah. They couldn't have had a more dominating performance against the best team 
one of the best teams in the Big 12. And then what BYU does to Kansas State is even more over-the-top domination. What a crazy uh, Saturday. Sports, 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 sports. Special from one side. The Big 12 opener comes down to this play. Sanders gets the feet set. What are your other college football thoughts? <laughs> the Colorado game was great. Shadur drives me crazy. He never gets rid of the ball. Every throw he makes is just a little late. Um, But I knew. Here's what I was saying. I was sitting there watching it with, I think my wife was sitting next to me. And I just, I should have verbalized my thought, Larry, because I... Before he threw the first Hail Mary that hit off the, the kid's chest and bounced off, I was going to say Shadur's going to complete this Hail Mary. And then he it was incomplete. And then the next one, he nailed. But I didn't verbalize it, so it obviously doesn't count. That was great. Aranda's got to be gone soon, but it's Baylor, so how much expectations do you have? You know, this is a guy who took you to a sugar bowl. So if I'm Waco, I'm not firing Aranda. I'm keeping him. Even though it's an inexcusable loss. Colorado tried to run the ball a little bit more, Larry, which, you know, we were happy to see. Yes. Um, And Travis Hunter made that incredible hit at the goal line to cause the fumble and the touchback to win the game. He's, uh, he's the truth. Yes. Let's do... Um, Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's first game in the SEC at home at Memorial Stadium. No chance. They're going to bench their quarterback. Arnold's going to be benched. Um, Venables is clearly not the top end guy they were hoping for. And so Oklahoma, you stupid idiots. I mean, you could have been in the playoff every year for eternity had you stayed put. Instead, you're knocked out of the playoff. Week one of conference play in the SEC. Get the heck out of here. Love watching USC lose. Love watching, yeah, love watching Oklahoma lose because they left to go to the SEC. I love watching USC lose in devastating fashion in the big house to a very average Michigan team. This Michigan team is not good. They had in Orgy, their second string quarterback. He's terrible. They don't look very good. And USC is supposed to be this resurgent defense with the Anton Lynn as their defensive coordinator and Miller Moss is really good. He beat LSU and they, they lose week one in the new conference. Michigan runs in the touchdown on fourth and goal from the half yard line. Good for the Wolverines. Sad about Nebraska. How do you lose, you know, to Illinois? This is supposed to be your year. Nebraska to me is kind of like hurricane. Like, so much tradition, so much history, so much winning, triple option, all that stuff. I'm pulling for Nebraska just like I'm pulling for Hurricane. And Nebraska let me down against Illinois. On uh, That was a Friday night game, right? Yes. Ole Miss wins by 100 again. Uh, love Kiffin, but his schedule's embarrassing. Furman. Middle Tennessee State, Wake Forest, and Georgia Southern. Ole Miss is going to lose two games in the SEC at least because of this cupcake crap schedule to inflate their numbers. Uh, Jackson Dart obviously looks good, but who cares until they play somebody. I'm happy for Kate Klubnick and Clemson and Dabo. They've played great ever since they got blown out by Georgia in week one. Blew out North Carolina State, who doesn't look good. but uh, Utah Tech. Kind of the same old, not a lot of positives to take. Reggie Graff, 7 of 21 for 96 yards. He did get the start, 17 carries for 85 yards. And a touchdown. He had a touchdown and two picks. So great. Uh, he was their offense. He did everything. Th those 85 yards were like 85 of like 120 total yards they had on the ground. And was the only quarterback who got snaps in that game, or at least throws in that game. They fumbled it four times. Tough. SUU 
tough loss. They were favored at Idaho State by two and a half. They end up losing by 10. Uh, Bronson Barron got time in the fourth again. Um, Jackson Berry, they got, let's see, was it 14-3, Larry? It was a stagnant kind of almost the whole first half. Barry did lead a couple of drives, but tough law. I thought SU was going to win that game before it started. I was thinking they could go up and beat Idaho State, and they end up losing by 10. Tough loss for the T-Birds. All right, thank you, Larry. We got to hustle. Sports, 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 sports. Sport hole. What's up with Travis Kelsey? He stinks. Oh, um, Kelsey looks a little slow. I think Big Tad said it. And Mahomes isn't throwing to him as automatically as he always has done in the past. He's looking at other people. Doesn't have anybody to throw to. And Mahomes is still going to go to the Super Bowl. It's amazing. Uh, A lot of drops. Xavier Worthy in crunch time stopped his shallow cross route. Mahomes threw an incomplete pass. Like, he's throwing to non-receivers. There's no, like, true receivers on this team except for Kelsey. And Kelsey just doesn't seem himself this year. I don't know what's going on. But it doesn't matter. Mahomes isn't going to lose that game to Cousins. What else you got, Larry? Are we done? Oh, before we go to the Gus Johnson Award. Yes. Ah, forget it. Let's go to the Gus Johnson Award. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, this week's Gus Johnson Award goes to... Second down and 11. Ball moves back to the 44-yard line. Snap to Truman. Give to Sawyer again. Off tackle right side. Has a hole. Hurdles a man. He's at the 20, 10, 5. Will he get there? Not quite. He's down. Congratulations, Carrick Segmiller. He gets $10 of Fubu Chicken to Island Grinds. And it was a great call. It was an amazing play. Rand Sawyer, one of the funnest guys to watch in Region 9 history. Uh, just jumps over a safety. A clean hurdle, lands on his feet and keeps running, almost gets into the end zone. Had he gotten into the end zone, it would have been even more amazing. He, st- he got stopped at the two-yard line. What a game. What a season that Rand Soros have having, even though Dixie uh, lost. Incredible atmosphere at Dixie High. Sucked it. Hey, Larry, it stunk that one of those teams had to lose because they both played their hearts out. We've got uh, more Region 9 football for you this weekend. Let's see. What do we got? Crimson Cliffs is at Stansbury. Hurricane is at Snow Canyon. Cedar is at Pineview. And Desert Hills is at Dixie. Can't wait. Quick break. Back uh, with more right after this on your local sports leader. Get back, Get 15% off a set of Brake Mess Select, Select Pro, or Import Direct brake pads and two rotors now at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. <laughs> 